Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be looking at how to solve practical problems. Or let me say, how to analyze physics practical when you are not given experiments. So when you are not given the apparatus to use. Many students have been asking me on how can we solve GC physics practical. It is quite easy. You see, in physics, there are two different methods of what's performing practical. We have the experimental one, that means you are going to perform it in the laboratory. And we also have the analytical method, let me say the words, the um, alternative. The alternative simply means the practical has already been performed in the laboratory. The only thing you need is just to measure the value gotten when they perform it by the examiner. Now, how do we go about this? The only thing you need in performing this practical, let me tell you what, in performing this practical is only your ruler and the pencil that you're going to use to measure. That's all. While there are some of them that does not require you using pencil, so you use using pencil and ruler. All together. Now, before I start today's class, before we go in depth into how to take a readings if you are solving physics practical in GC, I would like you to all subscribe to my channel and please click on the notification bell to receive notification of my new videos and also like my videos. So, if there is anything that you are confused about about the practical, please don't forget to drop a comment in the description box below. Now. Let's get started. I have this practical that is shown to you on the board. It's all about electricity. Electricity. Now, you are given the experiment, it's going to be given to you like this in this format. You are going to be given this experiment like this. Then you are now asked to carry out the experiment. It is quite easy. Just measure and get your table of value. But how do we go about it? Take a look at this. We are given a circuit. We have a the circuit is given to us. We have a resistance here. This is my resistance bus. This symbol simply indicates a variable resistance. And the variable resistance we are going to use in this experiment is a resistance bus. Don't forget you are not given the resistance bus. But you are assumed that the experiment has been performed. But they want you to get the value gotten when they perform the experiment. Now, we are given the ammeter. The function of the ammeter is to measure the current that is flowing through the circuit. And you are given a resistance. This is an unknown resistance X. Want to know the resistance of this word X? And also, give us the key. The function of your key in a circuit is to open and close a circuit. Now, we are given the word EMF or the battery, the cell battery that we are going to use to power the circuit. Now, the procedure for the experiment is given to us. They said, in the circuit diagram shown above, R is a resistant bus. We are given this R as a resistant bus. If we check here, we have what's a symbol for a resistant bus. These are resistant bus. Now, we said S is an unknown resistor. E is a battery. K is a key. And A1 and A2 are ammeter. You know, in this case here, we have what's ammeter, A1 and A2. So, I'm sorry that I didn't put here, respectively. R, sorry? Are uh, ammeter. Now, current I1 and I2 are measured. Sorry, this is my A1. This is my A2. This is my A2. Sorry. So, these are A1. These are our A2. So, this A1 and A2 are two different ammeters. And the function, don't forget I said, the function of an ammeter in a circuit is to measure the amount of current flowing through the circuits. Now, we have what A1 and A2 respectively are recorded and key is then open. Now, listen carefully. When a key is open, it simply shows that what no current will flow through the circuits. That means current does not flow in an open circuit. Altogether, just like saying you are switching off your power supply in your homes. Altogether, now we can only have supply of current when the key is closed. Now, in the question given to us, they said, respectively, I recorded that if key is then opened and resistance bus is set at a new value to obtain 
new corresponding values of I1 and I2. Now, normally if we are to perform the experiment ourselves, how do we perform the experiments? That's what I want to know here. You see, if I want to perform the experiments in the laboratory myself, the circuits will be drawn to us like this. I'm going to what, connect the circuits the way it is found here. Then I need my resistance bus to take my readings. That means when I close the circuit, when the circuit is closed, sorry, we we'll forever open the circuits. When the circuit is open, I will take the value, I will change the value of my resistance. When the value of my resistance is what changed, then I can close the circuit. On closing the circuit, we can measure the amount of current that is flowing. But in this case, they are not asking me to do that. The other thing has been measured for you. You just need to get how do we get it. Now, take a look. They said, the experiment is repeated four times to obtain values of R, I1, and I2. The figure below shows the resistance R in the resistance bus and the corresponding values of the current I1 through and meta A1 and I2 through and meta A2. Now, how do we record? This symbol that I have seen here is a symbol for resistance bus. In alternative to practical, in GC, you are going to be given all what you want to measure. Let me say the basic that you are going to measure. We need to measure our resistance from here, measure our resistance, measure our current I1, and measure my current I2. I will measure my resistance from here, and I'm going to measure my current I1 and my current I2. This is my current I1 here, this is my current I2. If we check the value, you notice that we are given five readings. Five readings are taken. Reading one, second reading, third reading, fourth reading, and what? Fifth reading. Everything has been given to us. Now, for the current I2, the same thing, reading 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, how do we measure our resistance? It's quite easy. You see, normally, if I want to perform the experiment, in the resistance bus, we have different values of resistance. All together, we have different values of resistance. Now, this dot it simply shows that what the key is the resistance is inserted into it. This dot here simply means the resistance is what inserted into it. Or let's say in this picture, we're going to take it as whenever you see this dot here, it simply represents that what no resistance is inserted into the circuits. All together. Now, this guy is supposed to be. Oh, sorry. Now, when this thing is what this bus, this dot here, it simply means the resistance is being inserted. Why these two dots simply means there is no resistance that is inserted in the circuit. Now, how do we not do this? How do we do this thing? Normally, that's what they mean in this case. But if I want to perform the experiment myself, if I want to perform the experiment, it simply shows that I'm going to remove, if I need, for example, I need to measure a resistance of 2 ohms. I need to remove 2 ohms. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to remove all the, ohms, all the resistance there except only 2 ohms. Now, how do we not go about this? How do we measure it? It is quite easy. If I want to measure resistance, this is my resistance 1. To measure my resistance 1, I need to look at where there is no dots. The holes. All this one simply means the resistance has been inserted. Now, here, there is no single resistance in this place and this place here. All together. So, the resistance of this position and this position can be measured. All together. So, in this first resistance 1, you know I have 1 ohm is not having resistance. And 2 ohms is also not having resistance, it's not having what? Dots. It simply means resistance, my first resistance reading is equal to 1 plus 2, which is going to give us 3.0. If we check my readings, my first reading of resistance is 3.0. Now, if you go to the second reading, which one is left? We have 1, which is not having P, and we also have what? 5. Now, total resistance in that circuit. We have what? My resistance for this second reading is 1 plus 5, which is going to give me 6. The same thing goes to this. This is 4 and 5. That is 9. This one is what is going to give us 15. Or 9, 15 here. Why this one is going to give me 5 plus 25, which is equal to 30. I've taken my readings of resistance. Please, to understand how to tabulate our readings, you can, so, you can, what? You can visit my previous video. On what how to write or let me say the punishable offense that we make in physics practical. Altogether, for you to understand how to tabulate our reading, this is my video. The link of the video will be sent with what shown below. Altogether, to tell us on how can we tabulate our reading 
to get our full marks in physics. Now, the next thing is, if you check here, I want to tabulate my reading of, of, on current. How do we go about this? We just need to understand the readings of a meter. You see, in this text here, we are given the exact readings of a meter. This is a meter. Normally, if you check your meter, that means I'm talking about your ruler. If you check your ruler, you notice that your ruler is always in centimeter. The same thing, this reading here, this ruler, this reading here is in centimeter. Please note, this is centimeter. I just need to understand how do I read it. Normally, between 0 to 1, altogether, this is 0 to 1. If I count the number of lines that are here, it is going to be 10. That means this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and this is 10. So, this is standard ruler. This is a normal standard ruler. How do you not measure it? You just need to go to, you see all these things that look like the end of the clock. Just need to measure it. Where does it where does that point lie? If I look at this here, this one is quite easy. You notice that from year to year, it is at this point, the second line. Now, it is found at the second line here, which is here. This is two. This is 2.1. Why is that going to be what? 2.2. Two two. Exactly. That's what this pipe is going to give me. But if I take a look at from here, this is my one. My one, I'm starting from one. Please don't forget, you take your reading from one because this, first is, the, this is the first reading one. If you check the first reading, it's exactly at four. So my reading is going to be 4.00, your current. That is in two decimal. Now, if I check the second reading, which is my I2, my I2 is exactly at three. This is going to be, give me 3.00. I3, if you check here, this is my I3 here. My I3 is at, if this is two, this is 2.5. 2.5, 2.6, and 2.7. My I3 is equal to 2.70. My I4 is found in 2.4. This is 2.5, this is 2.4. Look at, let's, let's count. 2, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4. So we have 2.40. Your I5 is equal to 2.20. I'm taking the reading on I1, then you can also calculate your reading on I2. That is the second arm meter. Taking your I1, my I1 is, this is 2, my I1 is 2.1. This is my I1, or oh, let's say, sorry, my I position is 2.0. It's exactly at 2, sorry. Now, let me say here, this is 2.0. Now, this is found in 2.0. That is my I1. Why my I, the second I, with my I, um, second value, of my reading is 1.0, exactly on 1. The third value is on, this is 0. This is 0 0.5. Because this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. I have 0 0.7 as my third reading. My fourth reading should give rise to 0 0.4. 0. Why my fifth reading is equal to 0 0.2. Quite simple. Just for you to tabulate everything, get your value of I1, your value of I2 and take your reading of the resistance. After taking the reading of all this, then you can tabulate your reading. That's all your unique in what in GC, in GC. You see, the next thing is for you to go to how can we plot our graph? That is another section entirely. Taking the reading is quite simple. Now, after I've got my I1, I2, and the next thing in the question, we have to find. I1 minus I2, subtract your I1 and I2, I'll be getting all this, I'll get all this value here. My Z is equal to I2 over I1 plus I2, you're going to get this also, and your resistance inverse. Resistance inverse simply means 1 over my resistance. Anything you get for your resistance, that's what we call resistance inverse. R inverse is 1 over resistance. That means 1 divided by this, we're going to give you this. One way like this, you give me this. One way like this, you are going to divide each of the resistance, right? That means you use one, so you are going to divide the resistance, divide one by each, each resistance. You get values of this. That's all about your physics, alternative to practical in physics for GC 2022. Hope all together. So, in my next video, I'm going to explain to you if you are given a value. That if this is under electricity, what about if you are given question under mechanics on or optics? Then we need to measure.
Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and also click on the notification bell and give us a thumb up to like our video. Thanks very much.